Welcome back, CSC 230 to EX4. This is part three, and in part two we did the HTML, and we just have a little bit to do to the HTML to link our link items, and then we're gonna take away the bullets, we're gonna put them on one line, we're gonna do some styling with CSS, but since we're getting the HTML done first, what I'll do is I'll go back into my replit coding area here, and just link these. And remember, if you wanna link text that's already there, put a space and then do A and tab. That way it won't mess up, it won't think that the A is part of that link or attached to that text. And then you could take this and cut it, or drag it, you could physically drag it, I just cut it and pasted it, and I'll just put this space back. So it'll look like that, and what we're doing is just putting a pound sign, which is kind of a placeholder for a link. So it won't link anywhere, you won't get an error or anything, it'll just, it'll behave like a link, but it won't really go anywhere. So that's what it's gonna look like, and after you do this, probably the easiest thing to do, rather than doing that three more times, is just highlight this whole link in here and copy it, and then paste it over this. Now you'll still have to replace the two and the three and the four, but that's easier than doing all the other stuff, I think. So we're, we're gonna do that and just change this again to be two, three, four. So those are the link labels that we see. And when I go over them or when I hit run and then I refresh, I should see these with like blue underlines. So let me refresh and now they're links. And they won't do anything. And notice that they have a hover they have no hover, they're blue, and when they're visited, they turn purple, and when they're active, when you hold down your mouse, they turn red. And I'm mentioning that because we're gonna be adjusting them when we work with links. And we can you know, customize links to work like buttons and drop downs and all kinds of things. They won't look like this, because this is gonna be on one line. If you remember, our link is gonna look like this, and we'll just change the color. Now, I didn't keep the number sign in because we didn't really need that. I think that was a mistake anyway, so we won't have the number sign in there. And we'll just have the text change color but we are gonna have it on a blue background and we'll do some of this stuff here and I'll show how it's easier to work with colors in Replit than it is in Gorm because they have right in the code environment, they have a place to find a color so you don't have to keep going to other websites. So that's what's happening next. So what we're gonna do is start working on our CSS. So remember, I'll just hit run here and I'll go to my CSS now. Now I already put global reset and we could put a global reset. We can use an asterisk and just use that as a target. That's just a very kind of basic global reset. Instead of doing all those ones from the Shea How book, we could just do that. And that means everything, and we're just gonna set margin and padding to zero. So I'm gonna put margin zero, put a semicolon, and padding colon zero semicolon. You don't have to put pixels or anything, just zero. And that will zero everything out. If you, if you go here, it should just take away margins and things. So if you refresh it, now everything's kind of crunched together. Now we're gonna control the spacing. So we don't want default spacing in there. If you're thinking, well, now it doesn't look good. It doesn't matter, it didn't look good anyway. So now we're gonna control the spacing that's in there. And notice that the heading ones are bigger here. I could even make these heading twos. If, if this thing I think was a heading one, I could make these heading twos, although I could just target them inside that paragraph. So I'll just point that out. I, I think uh, I think when I did it, I might have made these H2s. But I already made them H1, so I'll let them go. So we'll, we'll just have to deal with that as we go. Having an H1 there isn't a problem. We just have to make sure we're targeting the H1 that's inside the column class or inside the section element instead of the H1 that's up here in the banner. And that's very easy to do. So we can, we can adjust that. And let's kind of work our way down. We'll start with the header first. And if you remember, this one had kind of a antique white kind of background and a big dark blue headline, and we'll kind of do that for now. And also notice it's 100% and the text is centered. So let's kind of work with that. We'll go into our CSS and I mean, you could put custom styles or something. You could put custom styles if you want and then highlight this if you remember and do command question mark. And there's my custom styles. And I'm gonna do header, because it's the header element. I'm gonna target that first. And I'm gonna give it a background color. And I could just start typing background and background color will come up. And I'll just say antique white. And antique white came up. Now, if you're not sure about the color, if you hover over here, it's gonna show you antique white. So if you want it a little darker or something, you can go here and choose different colors. Now, you're gonna wanna preview it to see what it looks like. And actually, when you start using the picker, it's gonna use RGB, but when I first went in here and I first started typing, I'll put a colon, notice it gives me a whole list of names here. 
So I'll try, I'll try antique white, see what it looks like and put a semicolon and see if I like it. I'll run this, I'll go up here and I'll refresh. And that's what it looks like. And I think that's okay. So that's fine. And it's going 100% width automatically already. So that's okay. So maybe I don't, I don't have to change that. I think I put width 100%, but that's fine. That's going across the page. If I reset the page, it's going across. So I'm gonna leave that like that. I could put a padding amount in there. So we have nice padding around there. So inside my header, I could put padding. And I'm gonna put 1M for now. now 1M is basically whatever the default font size is. So the default font size is like 16 pixels. So 1M is usually 16 pixels. So that's kind of the way, the way it goes. So you'll see M being used a lot. So I'm gonna put 1M. And if you're not sure, just type in 1M and see how it looks. But that's a nice kind of a size that's, it's almost like using a percent, but it's based on 16 pixels. So I'm gonna put 1M in there first. And I'll go here and I'll refresh it. And now that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna make this a lot bigger. I'll make the heading bigger. And it, I could go in here and do it, but maybe I'll just put header H1. So that'll be the H1 inside the header. I'm targeting just that. And make sure you put your curly braces and hit return. And there's header H1. And it's showing a wavy line there, like there's an error, but if you hover over it, it's saying do not use empty rule sets. So I didn't because there's nothing in there. It's just giving me an issue because I have nothing in there. Now for the header H1, I'm just gonna make the font size, font size, I'm gonna make it, I could use a percent. I'll put like 300%, see what that looks like. 300% of what the original size is. So three times the original size. So let's just look at that, refresh it. That should be fine for now. I might have, might go bigger, but that looks okay. And I'm gonna make it blue. And remember it's color, it's not, font color. Now, if you're not sure of the blue color, you could just choose blue. And then if you hover over this, you can go and kind of make a darker, like a richer kind of blue. Like I don't want a real electric kind of blue. I want a kind of a more of a navy. So I'm going to find a navy blue and it's just giving me RGB colors and that's okay. It's not giving me hex. Maybe there's a way to change that. But so if you just hover over this, I think if you just go off and then hover over again, it'll bring this up and you could kind of use this thing. They even have an alpha here or you could make things semi-transparent. We won't worry about that yet. And perhaps you can make this hex, but that's fine right now. Although maybe not because hex does not use an alpha. So if you wanna use alpha, I guess that's why it's using RGB because it's a little more powerful. And let's see what that looks like. We'll go here and we'll refresh it. And I don't know, it could be a little bluer actually. <laughs> I'll move it up here, give it a little more blue. And I'll, I'll just hit run, just get in the, the habit of using run. Run typically shows it over here, but I'm just kind of using run like save. And I'll put run there. That looks a little better. Again, it's not really standing out. And what I'll do is I'll make my, I'll make my nav that same color, the background of the nav. So I'm gonna do the same thing with nav. So I'll go back here. And now that I have header H1, I have padding inside my header. If, if you want more, you know, more, put 2M in there. And do that. And actually, I think I want to center this. So I'm going to center that and I would do that with the header and I'm going to do something called text align. And text align I think is up at the top. It's not showing up because I think it's getting cut off there by that line. I'll do text align. Oh, there it is. Text align and center. And it'll center text. And that looks good. Maybe not as big enough, but I think if I use Georgia, it'll even look bigger. But if we need the text bigger, that's fine. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the nav part and I'll just go in nav, make it the same color. I'll put nav, target nav, and I'll, I'll just copy this, that declaration, and I'll put it there and I'll change this to be background because right now it would just be the text. So I'll change it to be background and I'm not gonna change the text color to be white yet because we're gonna do that through the link. So I'll just let that go for now. And obviously we can't even see this stuff right now because it's still black and they're links, which are blue. So they're over there, so we have to change those. But we'll put them on one line to see them a little bit better. I mean, actually just to see them, maybe I'll just do this. I'll put text, I'll put color white. That way we at least see the color for now. Although I don't think that'll matter. Actually, let's do this. Let's make the color white and see if that does anything. Okay, and it didn't. So why didn't it do anything? Because they're links, they're not text. 
So because they're linked, they're using a special blue color for the text. So we're going to have to target the the A link. So we could we'll do that. Actually, let's do it now. So I'll take that out. I'll keep the background color of nav. And now what I'll do is I'll target nav A and they have something called and if you're not sure, if you're like, well, how do you know? I'm going to go to W3 schools. I like to just search W3 schools and I'll put CSS links because it's about uh, coloring links and they'll take you right to the section, the CSS tutorial, CSS links, lots of things you could do with links, make them look like buttons, all kinds of cool stuff. You could change the main color, you could change the A link, the A visited, the A hover, all that kind of stuff. And notice it has a colon with it. So, you know, it's targeting that first and then we're actually going to do the property. So what I'm saying is if we go here, we're going to do like nav a link and then use that as a selector. So the nav a link, we're going to put color white and we'll just see what this looks like for now. Nav a link. So it's the a link inside of nav, although it'll capture any link right now, but we're targeting that one inside there and they're not showing up because they're still showing visited. So we can actually do this. We can do comma a visited and put that in there so they're both white. And I think we can also put a, yes, active. We could put active in there and have them all covered because we don't need it to be turning red. So I'll put a active. So those three things. And I don't think we have to put nav a link, nav a visited. I think we're okay like that. And I'll run it and now it should be okay. Now they're white. Now they're all on separate lines and they have underlines so we're gonna remove all that kind of stuff. And one thing we could do with this stuff is we have to target the list because remember the original HTML is a list even though we're, we're doing link stuff. So also with links let's get rid of something called text decoration. If you go here you'll see something called text decoration. Here's text decoration, and that is used to remove underlines. So if you put text decoration none, it'll remove the underline, because we don't want underlines in this stuff right now. Or do we? Wait, let me see. Maybe we do. I forget. Um, well, here's the thing. If they're looking like buttons, you don't want underlines. But if they're not buttons, you want links on them so they look like links. So I'll, I'll leave them on for now, but just keep in mind you can use text decoration none if you're building buttons and you don't want them to have underlines. But I'll leave the underlines there for now. They're not going to hurt anything. I just want to put them on one line and that's actually list styling and we're going to use something called CSS inline block. And what that does is there's it says here there's a difference compared to display inline display inline block allows you to set a width and height on the element which is perfect when you're working with navigation. So we're going to use inline block display inline block but it's going to be for the list elements. So we got to deal with the list elements first. So Let's go back here and let's look at our HTML just to see what we're dealing with here. Remember, these are the LIs, the list elements, and what we're going to do, we're, we're going to take away the bullet and then we're going to put them inline block. So how do we take away the bullet? Well, let's go to CSS lists. And there's different things, different bullets you can use. You could also do something where you take it away, where you say list style none. List style none will take away that. And I think you need to say list style. But if we just say list style none, that should take away the bullet that's showing there. So we want to take away the bullet. We don't want... The bullet is actually there off to the side, believe it or not. Uh, it's getting cut off, but we're going to take it off. Maybe I should wait. Maybe I'll wait on the bullet and then we'll remove it later. Because if you can't see it, how are you going to know if it went away? So I'll leave the bullet there for now. But I will do something called inline. And that's going to be my CSS. So I could just jump back here to my CSS. And that's actually going to be the list items, I believe. Let's try it out. Is it going to be the list items or is it the list itself? Let's try li. And it is the li inside of nav. So you could do this. You could say nav li. That's just being consistent to show you that that's the list inside of there. So you could say nav li. And I'm just going to put display. Remember, styling list. Uh, I think it's under CSS display, but if you look at inline block, it's called display inline dash block. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do display inline block. That'll put them all kind of in a line. So we're going to say display and then inline block and put our semicolon. And let's run it and see what happens. 
and now it's all on one line and that's what we want and we could use padding in between to move them around we could even align them centered now would we align the LIs or would we align everything in the nav uh, let's try to align everything in the nav let's go text align and center and see if we could align everything in the nav and you're like well didn't you do it before well I'm just trying out different things here because uh, a lot of times with CSS you need to experiment to see how things work so I'm going to do text align center and see if it centers everything in there so I'm going to refresh and it does it centers everything in there that's the way we want it for now you don't have to but we'll do it like that and I'm also going to put padding around this now I didn't put any padding inside the nav yet I could or I could put padding around the links that'll do the same thing as well so let's let's try that let's go to my links and Put padding or I can do it to the li now some of this stuff is going to be a little confusing when you go to change backgrounds and stuff so where you put padding is kind of an issue so let's do this if we put if we put padding on either side let's say we put five there and five or whatever half an M here half an M there then it's going to double up in the middle is that okay maybe maybe not let's just try it for now and we want it around the top too because you you know it, we don't want this thing so narrow so we could put padding in the nav or around the links so let's put them around the links and see how that looks padding and I'll just start off with 0.5 M should be like 8 pixels something like that 0.5 M run it I'll go here and and notice I'm not seeing any padding on the top it's not really doing anything on the top padding 5m should be all around so let me do this let's put the padding here seeing if that helps things 0.5m run it okay that looks better now we have padding on the top and bottom we have padding in between that's good for now we could adjust the sizing later but you see what's going on now one other thing I could do just to make it look nice is first of all we'll take it out of that font we don't want it in a times font and then let's just change the color let's make it turn yellow or something when you hover over it so we'll do one more here I'll backspace and I'll put nav a colon hover and that's like the rollover kind of thing and I'm targeting that so don't get confused by the by the colon there nav hover let me get rid of that and what I'm gonna put in here is color put a colon and I don't know if I just have a yellow I could just scroll down I'll try gold I'll use gold for now run it Fresh it it doesn't look different until I hover over it and look at that it's nice and again we'll change the fonts we'll deal with the fonts last we want to get our layout done first then we'll kind of tackle more of the detail kind of stuff later so the color of those but that's what we want and if we want to make these like blocks then we can deal with that later that's a little more work so I'll just keep it like this for now and now we have to style this part here we want to actually make a container that's about 80 percent of our page and give it a kind of a light background that was our background here it looks like we had a darker top and it was lighter here so we're kind of doing the opposite <laughs> so maybe we'll do it dark down here it doesn't matter so we'll, we'll find a darker color down here and I'll go to my CSS and what are we going to target well if you're not sure go in here and look we're going to target the container first and then we're going to target more of the text and things inside the column so let's target the container and we're going to go to our CSS and we can put section we could put the parent here section dot container whenever you specify a class name you use a dot now we could have just put container but putting section is it's, you know it's like more of a formality but at least it shows us that it's the container um, actually it's it should be this it's it's this would be the container inside of section this is actually it's good that I typed this and I was getting like a, a green thing here not that I have an error but it's not actually the container with the class name inside of section it actually is section dot container because it's section with the class name container so that means it's it has that name if there's a space that means it's inside of it if there's no space it means it's like the name it's like when you have an email and it says like homa dot Richard at RCN kind of like that so let's give it a background color and let's give it a padding so I'm gonna tab over background color I'll just start typing something antique whites there and if you want to get that list again I think if you put the colon it'll give you a nice list now I forget what I had before I think it was antique white so maybe I'll go darker 
I'll try burly wood. That looks nice. <laughs> I'll try burly wood and see how that looks. And I'll just check it out. If I'm just checking out the color. That's a little on the dark side. And the nice thing, if burly wood's too dark, you could just kind of go over here and lighten it up. Now that's using RGB, but that's okay. Just lighten it up a little bit and then just refresh it. Wait, that doesn't look any, <laughs> that looks even darker. Uh, let me go here again. I don't know if that, unless I didn't refresh it. Let me go here again. Click off and then hover over there. Let's try that. And let me refresh that. That looks a little better. I mean, it's still darker than that one. That looks good. So I'm going to go with that and let's put some padding on it. So that'll be another declaration padding and we'll do it all around. And let's do 2M for now. See how that looks. It might be too much. And then also we're going to do instead of a hundred percent, which any kind of block container is a hundred percent by default, let's put a width of 80% and it needs to be centered. So if you remember from, I think our other exercise, we use something called margin auto to center it. So let's do margin auto and it has to be after width. Let's put margin auto. And that puts the same amount of margin on either side of the container. So whatever it is, it'll be the same amount. So that should work. Let's see if that centers our container. And it does. And it stays 80% when you resize it. Now we have stacked columns right now, but you wouldn't want columns read with really long line lengths like that. Like down here, if you had it this thick, stacked columns look good. But this way you don't. So that's why we're going to put them in three columns going across and then change it as we go. And again, we're not messing with any of the fonts yet, although we would want spacing in between the columns here. But we'll wait until we actually you know, have them set up because they're going to be a side of each other. So we're going to deal with that in a little bit. But 2M, I guess that's okay. I guess that, that padding around there, that 2M padding, it seems okay. And we're going to make these columns. That's the container itself. And also what I'm going to put at the end is going to be overflow auto. That'll keep anything from going outside of there. We'll put that there right away. I think we used that before. We use overflow auto. And then we're going to target our, our columns. So let's look at our columns. We're moving down here. We have three columns. They all have the same class call, but then they have additional classes called call one, call two, call three. We're going to focus on just the kind of the one they share, which is call. And we're just going to say that all the columns are floated left for now. So they all kind of float left of each other. So let's do that. And what you have to do, well, let's do that. Let's just say float left and see what happens because not a whole lot's going to happen. So I'm going to go back to my CSS and I'm going to target call and I'm going to put section dot call. That's because now this is the column inside of section. This is the, the name of the container. This is section with the name container. This is the column inside of section. So I'm just pointing out that difference that a space makes a big deal here. So this is the columns inside of section and we're just going to put float left. Now that's not going to do anything. You know why? Do you? <laughs> maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, it won't because these are still block elements and they still go the length of the whatever container they're in. Unless we tell them they're going to be like 30% or 33% or something. So let's put 33%. We'll make them 33%. And that means a width. So we're going to put width 33.3, I guess to be you know perfect, you can put 33%. And I'll hit run and I'll refresh what we have is they're kind of running into each other. We have padding all around, but we don't have padding in between. This is why I said I almost wanted to put a uh, padding on column two to the, uh, or a margin or something, like a margin or padding to the left of column two and to the left of column three. Not necessarily to the left to there because that's going right up against that margin, if you could see what's happening. So we could put in like a margin left of column two and column three of like 1M. So we can try that. Let's just see, see what happens here. Again, we're kind of experimenting here. Now what we're doing is we're saying section, now this is call two comma call three. So this is, these are the, the classes inside of section. And now we're talking about column two, column three inside of section. And we're talking about both of these. 
and let's see what happens here if we put padding left, just left of those two, and I'll put 1M and see what happens. And it bumps it down. See, there's our padding. The problem is because we added padding to those columns, it added to the percent. So you have two options. You could either make the percent smaller or there's something called, and I just learned about this recently, and it's actually a nice help. I'll look at my other one just to, to remember because I'm not super familiar with it. But it's actually a something called box sizing border box. And it basically includes all the padding in there so it, you don't have to like keep adjusting the percentages. So this is called box sizing. And uh, I'm not even sure where it's here. You could go W3Schools box sizing to read about it and they'll show you it box sizing and without it that kind of tells you what's happening here so what it does with the CSS box sizing down here I didn't know exactly where it was in this list but it keeps the padding from being extra added to it so we're just gonna do something called box sizing here's the box sizing property down here I'll just copy it from here or because that's where you might see it, box sizing border box. So it just includes that, so it doesn't it doesn't do what just happened. So if I put this here, uh, it would actually be in, in knees. It would actually be included here. I don't think you would do it with the padding. But let me see if it, it should work with all the columns because they all have that property. I'll put box sizing border box, I'll put run, and I'll refresh it, and they should all go together now. Now if you need a little more here, maybe you could do 1.5M. And the reason this is so nice is because you'd always be adjusting the percent, you know, and trying to do math to figure out how, you know, if you, you added another half an M, you'd be like, oh, well, that's this percent. Now I got to make it 31% or something. But by doing that, it makes everything fit in there nice. So that's, that's nice. I never even knew about that before. If you see my old videos, I won't even mention it. So that's new. So that, that looks good. And now as it goes smaller, they still fit. Now that's running. Uh, I don't know what's happening there. That seems to be, column three seems to be running into that. It seems like we have it at column two, column three. I bet I named it wrong. I'm looking right now and I'm seeing that being off. Uh, maybe you, you even noticed by looking at it. it could, sometimes it's something I just overlooked. But, but I'm going to fix that so we make sure we have a padding to the left of that. And then we'll finish up here. And then I guess then we'll work on our breakpoints and some things with the links. So that's the end of part three of our EX4 CSS practice that we're working on and we'll see you with part four coming up.